How's it everyone, boys and girls? Here we are standing in front of Windy Impenetrable Forest. It is a bucket list destination. It is home to the mountain gorillas. And here I am with Amos, the professional guide. And he is part of UA. He has been guiding for, well, tracking the gorillas for now seven years. Yeah. Seven years in Windy Impenetrable. So unlike myself, who's uh, a Mazungu and, and uh, has tracked the gorillas uh, a, a, just a few times. Yeah, we have a professional that tracks the gorillas day in, day out. He's the professional, he knows what he's talking about and here I've come to ask him some questions. It's, it's amazing having him here to help out um, and giving us his time to tell us what the gorilla tracking experience is really about. And he's going to be the best person almost in the world to tell us what, how the gorilla tracking experience is happen and how it goes. So thanks Amos, thanks for yeah, coming. Welcome, you're welcome. Nice to meet you today. Yeah, thanks Amos. Yeah, yeah. So Amos, with your seven years experience and you literally tracking day in, day out. Yeah. Uh, you you yesterday you went tracking as a as a single activity and today you went and did the special habituation experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um just I got a few certain questions that the the listeners would be interested in the people watching us. Please. Uh, so just to start off, where can we track the mountain gorillas? Where everyone talks about this bucket list activity and where can people go to see these gorillas? Well, uh, we have two main islands here in the wild. We have uh, Bwindi Penetrable National Park and uh, we have uh, the Virunga, which is, there is about 450 square kilometers. Bwindi is about 331 square kilometers. Okay. So both of the islands have mountain gorillas in there even though Bwindi holds almost half of the world's population. So, so Uganda can, has half of the world's population? Almost half. Almost half? Yeah. Okay, so wow. we can track here in Bwindi and we can as well go to the Virunga for mountain gorilla tracking. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and, and countries that you can gorilla track? Sorry? Which countries can you do the uh, gorilla you tracking? You can do gorilla tracking here in Uganda, yeah. both in Bwindi and uh, Virunga. Okay. Because we have a fully habituated group in Virunga too. Okay. Called the Nyakagezi. Okay. And then we have a couple of habituated groups too in uh, Bwindi Impenetrable National Park. Then you can as well go to Rwanda and go to DRC. Okay. For gorilla tracking. So three countries. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Uganda, you're saying pretty much has half the world's yeah. population. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Now, and uh, so you're saying how many gorillas are there left in the wild, the mountain gorillas, across all the three countries? Okay, that's a great question. Uh, previously, if we can look at the historical part of uh, the information about the gorillas, way back in 1980s, we had just about 200 individuals 200, in, wow, the Virunga, yeah. in the Virunga. In the Virunga, okay. But uh, the recent information that came out from, uh, you know, we carry out the census after every about five years. So the information says the numbers have increased and increased. We currently have more than 1,000 about wow. 1,063 individuals, of which we have about 459 here in Bwindi, okay. and then the rest are in the Virunga. Okay, yeah. so literally there's over 400 gorillas standing right behind us here yeah. in Bwindi. Yeah. Okay, yeah. amazing. Yeah. And then a big question is, everyone asks, how much does gorilla tracking in general cost? Do you know the cost from Uganda versus Rwanda versus Congo? Well, uh, I may specifically be quite sure of Uganda. Yeah. Uganda is uh, six hundred dollars. Six hundred dollars. Normal okay. tracking permit. Normal $600 permit. Six hundred dollars per person. Okay. Rwanda is a little more expensive. It's slightly more than a thousand. Okay. Which is actually almost the same price we charge here for the long process habituation experience. Yeah. So I heard it's a thousand five hundred dollars. Which yeah. here you're getting almost yeah. a four hour experience yeah. versus yeah. a one hour in Rwanda. Yeah. And then just on Congo, like if you know basics on it, uh, I hear it's a little bit cheaper, but it's almost the prices rise by the time you've got visas, by the time you've got paid for security. That's true, yeah. Uh, and it's quite, a, it can be out of bounds at times. Yeah. Okay. Congo is, uh, well, a little cheaper, but yeah. when you look at the, the security issues along the border, yeah. few limits the chances of seeing where you there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and just on that, uh, is so Bwindi and 
a Magahinga National Park where you yeah. can track in Uganda. Is it yeah. safe to track gorillas? It's very safe. We've had uh, very well trained rangers that keep okay. monitoring the gorilla groups okay. and keep longer time actually monitoring. And so they are always sure of how the gorillas do throughout the day. And then next morning they wake up very early in the morning and check on the same groups. So okay. they are really safe. And uh, security wise, we as well have uh, security planted along the borders okay. to make sure that uh, the country is really safe. And, and when, when someone goes on a normal gorilla track experience, how many ranges do they take for, for protection and for information and for just general well-being? Well, uh, at the start, we always send uh, the advanced team. We call them trackers. Okay, the trackers go in front. They go in front before okay. the visitors. Okay. Well, everybody in the experience is a tracker. Yes. The absolutely. client, the security, the trackers too the advanced team yeah but uh, we always uh, call them the general name trackers yes. because uh, they do all that tactic job yeah on everybody's behalf okay so they go on ups and downs behind the mountains and everywhere looking for these guys yeah and uh, when they find them we always have a walkie-talkie with us okay it's uh, meant for communication okay so we have to always keep in touch okay and so make for sure safety that, uh, and for yeah. just finding the trackers yeah and the updates but uh as I saw yesterday, uh, our guys were out there for nine hours, so it really is a tracking experience. Yeah. These trackers sometimes themselves have difficulty. It's not these are wild animals with wild movements. It's mm -hmm. not plain and simple. It's yeah. A, it's a really it's an experience where we're not following them. It's not a safari where you're radioing all the time. Yeah. It's literally out there following their movements on so the we, ground. We actually thought it would be a medium walk yesterday. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we can't peg them. We can't tie them anywhere. Yeah. So they always have to move along their home, home ranges. Yeah. And so yesterday ended up being the farthest walk, actually, instead of the medium. Yeah. So we can tell early in the morning which group will be closest, which group will be medium or farthest. Yeah. We always tell late after the experience. <laughs> yeah. So tell after the experience how long it's going to take because you never know. Yeah. Okay. And um, just with the, the cost of the permit being $600 and then I hear in July... 2020 it goes up to 700 dollars where does this money go well uh when you look at the inflation and every other thing we always have uh, this money given out to the rest of the seas the rest of the protected areas okay. that can't sustain themselves like uh, renzori mountains which is only yeah. meant for hiking yeah we have semuliki which is, has a uh, bad watching and uh, the pygmies and the hot springs okay and the rest of the you know, the wildlife reserves like Pe and Ope. Yeah. All these can't raise enough money to sustain themselves. Okay. So we always have to distribute. It's kind of a source yeah. of the rest of the revenue to make sure that every other conservation area, every other protected area okay. gets something. So when do you yeah. protect all the other parks? Yeah. It literally yeah. is a provider for protective yeah. and conservation. Yeah. And No, your other parks are beautiful. Uganda really is the... Pearl of Africa, and this is the tip of the iceberg. This is the it's cherry a, on top. It's a pleasure to hear that. No, I, I, I love Uganda as the Pearl of Africa. This uh, is a special you. place. Uh, yeah. And now, uh, and in Bundi itself, the more popular destination, let me say, than uh, Magahinga uh, Mountain, just due to the scale of how many people can track. How many different sites do you have here that you can track, and how many guerrilla groups are there in general in Bundi? Well, uh, we have uh, four main entrance gates in okay. Windy. This is one of them, which is Rushaga. Okay. Rishaga. So we're standing at Rushaga. Yeah. Uh, Rushaga, is this the biggest? This has uh, more gorilla groups habituated. Okay. Yeah. And, and is this the only place for habituation experience where yeah. you stand? It's only here. Okay. Wow. Habituation okay. experience. Yeah. 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 Okay. And so and we have uh, Rohesia. Okay. In, uh, the eastern part yeah and then we have the north part which is Bohoma okay where we have our head office and then okay. we have um, Kuringo yeah yeah okay so all these four, four sites yeah. where tourists yeah. can literally come to yeah. those certain areas and start the trekking experience true okay yeah. wow yeah. and uh just when you there they arrive now they get split up into groups yeah what, that's true yeah. yeah what is the maximum uh, people you can have in a group in a group we always take not more than eight Eight people. Okay. Eight people per group. Yeah. We can have less than that. 
Yeah, it has okay. no problem. No, no, I've yeah. seen. You yeah. sometimes can end up on a private departure. It's depending on That's seasonality true. and all yeah. of that. Yeah, and if okay. there is no client still, we still have to send the truckers to check on the gorillas because we need daily records. Okay, so you're still protecting guys, yeah. the gorillas and finding out their yeah. movements. And yeah. Okay, wow. And then um, uh, just with regards, so, and then when you, when you go out trekking for the gorillas, how tough is it for clients? And how do they determine whether they're in for a full day or a two-hour stroll? Um, I've seen groups go for one hour. I've seen groups go for nine hours. Um, sorry, not one hour. One hour trekking, so probably three hours yeah. um, for the normal experience and nine hours also for normal experience. And you never know. Mm -hmm. So do you try to put them in groups depending on fitness and then you, depending on the gorilla's movements, you try to match that? Well, uh, we at times have uh, issues at the start. The clients are like, okay, Amos, I think uh, I can do this, I can do that. I have a problem in the knee. Okay. I, I got operated in my back, you know. Yeah. So everybody has his own issues. Yeah. And uh, we've had clients too who request for a tough one. Yeah. Someone no, likes sure. to do a, a farthest walk. Yeah. So we split these people depending on their strength, depending on their age, yeah. and depending on their request. Okay. So we follow such, such yeah. things. Yeah. You try yeah. cater for people's needs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that is that is great. Yeah. Uh, and then just so we say you got eight people, you've got your rangers. Now you go out and trek and eventually find the gorillas. Uh, how long can you spend with the gorillas once you've located them? And just how how close may you may you get to the gorillas? Well, uh, we always take one hour as long one as hour. you've got to the group. Okay. We all look at our time. Yeah. So we can't go beyond that because yeah. uh, the gurus need to have their the rest of the time yeah, in their space. privacy. Yeah, for sure. And uh, we always see them in about seven meters distance. Okay. Even though always after habituation, some groups get more and more used, and we have little babies born in a group. Sometimes the babies are more curious, and uh, yeah. they would love to extend closer than we need them. Yeah. That's when we always have to maintain the, the distance by keeping our steps yeah. back. So that we can keep in the recommended distance. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I understand that. Uh, when I was trekking myself, mm -hmm. I mean, we were always staying that distance. Yeah. But then one moved very quickly towards me and it brushed my shoulder. Oh, really? Yeah. Because uh, these guys are much more related to human, yeah. And, and uh, every to... any mistake we do with them, then yeah. can bring problems later. Yes. We do not know who is sick. Who is? Yes. You know. Yeah. That's why when you are sick, and you frankly speak, yeah, you can have a refund back. Yeah. At least fifty percent of the money. You can get a fifty percent refund if you're yeah. sick yeah. Well, before the trip. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's good that you cater for that because. Yeah. I mean, you never know. Traveling people can get sick, and that's I know that's true. great. That's Uganda doing that. A great idea. Yeah. Uh, and then let's have a look here. Uh, so, in general, in trekking distance, you never know. So it could be anything from a, a twenty minute out, twenty minute back, or it could be a full day out, full day. Yeah, back. yeah. We, we we never know. Yeah. As long as we've set off, depending on uh, the daily movement of the gorillas. They actually move uh, averagely a kilometer every day. Kilometer every day? Yeah. Is that in search of food or what is In search of food. It's actually after a few factors and yeah. the food, as you said, is one of the reasons. Yeah. If there is food in a location, they less move. Okay. They have to concentrate in one single place and feed. If there is no food in the location, then they have to move further and further looking for food. Yeah. The other factor, well, that brings in as well the fruiting seasons and, and the like. Yeah. If they are looking for fruit, they move ups and downs over several mountains looking for fruit. Okay, that's when it becomes difficult, like yesterday. Your, yeah, yeah. yeah. Moving quickly and over the mountains. Unexpected distances. Yeah. And uh, the other factor is the uh, location of other groups. Okay. If, so they, yeah. silverbacks not wanting it to go into each other's range. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't like to stay close to another silverback. Yeah. So he has to always take the family farther and farther to make sure that none of his wives is taken away okay yeah. no no protect those wives eh? yeah and then um just generally what do people wear 
Um, I see people come sometimes with crazy things and as a Ua guide, you have to tell them, no, no, turn them around and say, please, yeah, um, that's things actually, need to change. That's uh, a question that everybody should know the answer because it's been a big issue. I mean, uh, it's something that when you follow, you must get what you want. Yeah. This should be included in uh, your preparation before you start the walk. Okay. You should uh, mind about what you're putting on as you, uh, as you say. Your shoes must be right size. Okay. You should test your grip and traction. Yeah. Rub yeah, yeah, against yeah. the wall, rub yeah. against the, the ground, okay. make sure you have enough grip. Yeah, grip. Because as it's a tropical rainforest, yeah. it's always slippery sometimes. Yeah. And so you have to make sure you have such good shoes. Yeah. Then uh, you, have, uh, you have to carry with you long pants. Okay, long pants. Long pants. Is, so that, that, uh, is that for vegetation or for ants or what? Well, is uh, one is vegetation because yeah. we have uh, lots of stinging nettles. Oh, stinging nettles. Yeah. Bad news, yeah. And then, and then uh, we have uh, ants. Okay. Yeah, so you have to tuck in your pants into the stockings. Okay. Because once the ants get into your pants unknowingly, yeah, you can start dancing. dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah you start music. dancing. Yeah, so okay. you have to be well prepared. Put on a long sleeve too. Okay. The shirt, yeah, because uh, as you move around along the trails, the stinging nettles may bite you anytime. Okay, yeah, no, no, for sure. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm sure. And color wise, what do, do the gorillas interact? Do they respond to colors? Should you wear neutral colors or do bright colors matter? Well, uh, you should uh, less put on bright colors, yeah, try to look for dull colors, yeah, uh, because they are quite uh, you know. They try to change their behavior as you approach. Yeah. So you have to put on probably this is a great, it's a good color. Okay. Brown, very neutral yeah, safari very, yeah. colors. Yeah. Okay. Not shouting colors. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. Um, that's something everyone must be aware of before coming to the tracking site and being told to go change. Yeah. And then everyone, uh, I saw something and everyone's intrigued by this African helicopter when there's an emergency. In most countries, we call a helicopter, it comes out the sky, it's pretty impressive, insurance pays for this big helicopter, yeah. and here in Bundi, um, when you trek the gorillas, out of the blue comes an African helicopter to rescue you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what the African helicopter is? Well, uh, when you talked about an African helicopter, you reminded me of uh, when I talked about uh, bringing in a stretcher, she was like, okay, it must be a helicopter. Yeah. And then uh, she had to raise the insurance company. But the fact was, uh, this local one, we always have to carry some clients who are unable to walk any further. Okay. Maybe she's had an accident. She's uh, probably had some sleeping and uh, dislocation. Yeah. And she feels she can't walk any further. Okay. Then we always have to call a rescue team, which is always about $300 for the stretcher. Yeah. And uh, the number depends on uh, how heavy or big the client will yeah. be. So we okay. always have to call a number that we, we hope can take the visitor you away. almost have to yeah. put them on a scale in the middle of the forest <laughs> to say to see how many african helicopters no. and cars you need no so uh, yeah. an african helicopter comes as uh, an emergency okay when the visitor can't do yeah. any further walking yeah yeah okay on a, yeah. on a recent trip we had the african helicopter not for afri venture clients okay we had it for another <laughs> client called in and uh yeah, he, he was a big man and he needed it. And oh, really? these Ugandan porters are so strong. They are very um, strong. Showing up the, the side of a cliff face. You can't imagine how they get through the muddy trails and uh, the slippery trails. But uh, these guys are trustable. Yeah. We trust them. They really can yeah. make it. Yeah. No, it's amazing. $300 is not enough for a rescue thing like that. That's really, incredible. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then just for people, what, what other animals do you get in the Bundi and Penetra? Uh, great. Well, uh, gorillas are the main animals, probably, yeah. because everybody is coming for the gorillas. For sure. But uh, once you stay a couple of days in the forest, you really can imagine how beautiful the, the forest is. We yeah. have uh, the largest uh, mammal on earth, which is uh, the elephants. The elephant in the forest? Yeah. Wow. And uh, yeah. everybody's like, how do they make it up here and downhill? Yeah, no, guys, I think I heard a trumpet last yesterday. Oh yeah, it blows yeah. your mind to be outside a forest and hear yeah, a trumpet. Yeah, yeah. When it rains heavily, yeah, every everywhere is food and the vegetation regenerates. Yeah, and so most of the animals come a little closer to the community. 
Okay. So we wow. have uh, the elephants. We have as well one of the smallest mammals, the squirrels. Okay, yeah, squirrels. We have yeah. Squirrels here. We have uh, lots of snakes. Okay. Yeah, we have lots of monkeys here. Yeah. Four species. Four we species. Have, uh, and black and white. Yeah. Cobras. Yeah. We have a red tailed. Red tailed. Okay. We have a blue monkey. Okay, and, I've uh, seen the blue monkey. Yeah. Well, yes. And the largest monkey. Lahus. Yeah. Um, and then L, yeah. And chimpanzees. We have chimpanzees too. We have chimpanzees. Uh, they are quite shy. Okay, I've just heard them in a distance. Yeah, I've, I've heard the laughter. Yeah, okay. Yeah. No, very nice. So that's exciting. So people have the opportunity, obviously quite scary to see an elephant in the forest, that's but true, they yeah. can walk into it and yeah, uh, we have, you yeah. guys will protect them. We have lots of antelopes too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, a few reptiles. So okay. Like the no. frogs, the yeah. Frogs, yeah, the chameleons. And the big snakes. And the big snakes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, uh, and how many gorillas are in most of the groups? Uh, all over the forest, when people go track a group and they don't know which group they're going to go track, yeah. what is the smallest group and the biggest group in the in the forest? Every group averagely has uh, 10 individuals. Okay, plus minus 10 gorillas. Yeah, Okay. plus minus 10. Yeah. And okay. uh, we've had the largest being uh, more than 30. 30 is huge. But because yeah. this group always has probably most, uh, more than one, one silverbacks, okay. there's lots of competition and fighting in a group. So they were split all time, and uh, finally the largest group ends up being the smallest. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Jeez, that changes just because of the silverbacks dominance yeah. and yeah, effectively silver silverbacks. He fights, he beats the rest of the silverbacks. Okay. So, so yeah. So in a group, how many silverbacks do you get? As many you can have as many silverbacks. Silverback is literally just the male gorilla, yeah, or well, male uh, older gorilla, or no, uh, all males turn into silverbacks. All males. All males. At a certain age. Yeah, at around 12.5 or 13 years. Okay. You see the big boys changing into silver. Okay. And uh, not all the silverbacks become leaders. It is very important to note. Yeah, okay. Some, some silverbacks die without leading. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, myself, I thought a silverback was always a leader. Mm -hmm. um, it was the dominant male, but all silverbacks are males. Yeah. And now you're saying that only one becomes a leader and you well, fight yeah. to become a leader. You have to be strong enough to be to strong. the family. Yeah. So okay. uh, about uh, 40 or 45 uh, percent of the groups are mouth males. They have more mouth than one male. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, and the gorillas, how long do they live for? They can average live for 35 years in uh, their natural habitat. Okay. But it's important to note as well that sometimes they grow more than that. Okay. We've had a death of one of the most favorite silverbacks, one of the most famous one, called the Ruhondeza, dying at around 60 years. 60 years old. Yeah. So he lost the teeth and uh, he couldn't feed anymore. Yo, so he died like an elephant, yeah. losing the teeth and yeah, couldn't, so couldn't starvation. Yeah, starvation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I don't know, that's an uh, impressive gorilla. Strong genes there. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, uh, do these gorillas ever get aggressive? Do they charge you? Do they notice humans coming, interacting with them? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, this depends on uh, how close you are to them. Okay. That's why we have to always respect their natural habitat. Yeah. We are actually coming from our homesteads into their natural habitat. Yeah. And so we always have to judge the distance from us to them. Okay. If it is seven meters distance, we should keep it that. So if you go beyond the distance that you are required to stay in, he sometimes charges. Yeah. Because he doesn't need you to come as much as you should. You should just stay in a certain distance. Yeah. And so he shouts. He charges depending on how close you are going to him. Okay. Yeah. And I've seen they literally do a, a chest pump. Well, that's a sign of excitement. Yeah. And uh, sometimes kind of a command if he's, he decides to take the family away. He okay. does all sorts of, you know, beatings. I mean, you think that's just in the movies, but it literally happens. Yeah, yeah it happens. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, a common sign in uh, silverbacks. Yeah. If he's either happy or angry. Yeah. That's a sign of excitement. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we've seen the little babies to chest beat. I have a chest. But this beat. is just out of imitation, yeah. imitating the the dads. Okay. And uh, the little babies don't do a complete chest beat. They just uh, whether they are so seated or standing, they chest beat at any moment. Okay. But so the silver back stories have to make their chest beats complete by standing on two legs and then slide sideways chest beating. Okay, I yeah. saw that. Is that so? That's a normal thing to stand sideways, hit, and yeah. carry and on. Yeah, he goes. Yeah, 
Wow, and, okay. And so doing, he tries to as well allot the rest of the silverbacks yeah. who could be coming into the, into his uh, home range. Yeah. And maybe they stop at certain distance. Okay. So he tries to control his family by as well chest beating. Okay. Yeah. And then for all the women that will be listening, they care about one thing. We know that, and that's the babies. Yeah. Now, you get the question. I'm sure every time mm -hmm. uh, we questioned you on the way to the track yesterday. Yeah. Is there are there babies in the group? And you mentioned that nearly or pretty much every group in Bundi has babies, whether it be younger, older, juvenile. Yeah. There always have babies in the group. In there. It's always uh, zero to three years. That's uh, a baby, an infant. Then okay. three to six years is a, a juvenile. Yeah. And then six to eight is a sub adult. Okay. From eight and on, in males, we look at uh, the increment in their features. I mean, the, you can really tell it's a male. Yeah. When you look at the size, when yeah. you look at the neck and the muscles, males start being seen there and then. Yeah. Then, till they get to around uh, 10, 9 years, he's called a blackback. Okay. And then from 12.5 and on, He's a silverback. Females start uh, their adult female ages from eight. That's when they start mating. Okay. And we always expect them to have their first babies at around ten years. So they mate from ten eight years. The females have babies. Yeah. Really. Wow. That's yeah. That's young. You're saying that usually they live up to thirty-five in good conditions. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. so they can have multiple babies in their life. In uh, in her lifetime, she can have about ten babies. Ten babies. Yeah, unfortunately, just half of the ten can survive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a, always a question, uh, especially the girls. The girls want to know: Are there babies? Um, the guys want to know: Is there a big silverback yeah, in the yeah, group? So, yeah. But no, that's awesome. So you're pretty much always going to have both. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then just for the habituation experience, you went out there today, you yeah, did the yeah. habituation experience, it sounded amazing. Mm -hmm. um, what's that about? I see it's $1,500 versus the $600. Mm -hmm. what, what do you get extra for habituation? Well, the uh, habituation, it sounds itself special. Yeah. Because uh, teaching or getting a group, a guerrilla group, use it to human presence is so special. Yeah. You know, getting the group out from the wild, you know, follow it for a couple of months and years. And then finally you can see the group in a, a close distance. It's amazing. Yeah. So we always uh, count the four hours. I mean, uh, it takes four hours right from where they left the group the previous day. Okay. So yes. as you get to that point, yeah, you have four you have, hours. Yeah. So the four hours are inclusive of uh, looking for the group. So it's a proper and then experience. looking at it. Okay, no, that sounds like a yeah. real experience. It's a so, real experience. And you, you're almost luckier if you find them quite quickly because you get longer time to spend That's, with yeah. them. So how long you stay with the group depends on how fast you look at them. Okay. If you can take uh, 30 minutes looking for the group, then uh, you'll spend three and a half hours. Three and a half hours with the group. Them, yeah. Okay. With the group, yeah. No, so that's a real experience. It's a real experience. Yeah. Sometimes they move longer. Yeah. And so you spend the longest time following yeah. Yeah. and then uh, the lesser time, you know, viewing. Okay, but it's amazing knowing they're yeah. completely wild and you're still trying to get human presence. Yes, yeah. we follow a few signs, you know, yeah. uh, from the yesterday's spot. Yeah. We follow the poop, we follow the trails, we follow the the break, uh, leftovers, the breakings, the feelings, okay. everything. And the nests. And, then, and the, yeah, the nests, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, wow. That's so the start is always a little more complicated. Where yeah. We have to, you know, do some imitations. Okay. We try to assume we also move on falls. Okay, wow. Well, it didn't yeah. sound too difficult for you today. Yesterday, a nine hour hike today, habituation experience. Yeah, I was like, total fast. Yeah, to so luck night. plays a big part. Eh? Yeah. And then, just generally, I'm looking out here, and the, the weather this morning was sunny, like it was pretty hot. Um, firstly, always in the morning, you get that bit of the gorilla in the mist feel. Mm -hmm. Then it became beautiful, sunny, and now it's almost ominous gray but also beautiful because yeah. it feels like a rainforest yeah well, is this a normal day in Buendi? Uh, well so is different okay depending on which season you've come okay in so the, yeah and now we december time now here is this this is going into dry season a little bit yeah that's true the dry season is always uh, in december to february okay we have uh, the heaviest rains being uh, in april to may yeah and then we have uh, uh october to october okay. to november being a rainy season too yeah we've seen that on the roads yeah so <laughs> uh it depends on which time you've come okay. so currently it should be 
quite dry, but uh, it, the seasons changed. Okay. The weather changed everywhere. Yeah. I hear even outside in every country, season change. Yeah. What we call the sunny season is now a wet season. Yeah. So everything yeah. backwards. Yeah. Okay. So, so it you... depends on the season and probably luck. Yeah. yeah, but everything. But has luck throughout the whole year, you can go tracking, and it's a good experience. You yeah. can track in the rain; it's good. You can track in the dry; it's good. Yeah, it's uh, it's luck of the draw. On the rainy, in the dry season, you can get rain. In the in the rainy season, you can get. That's dry. true. However, during a rainy season, it's uh, full of fun, you know. Yeah. Sleeping and uh, sliding, sliding, and sliding, and, uh, and okay. trails, everything. Yeah. So yeah. it's a, also it's a can be a more intense experience, but real. It's a rainforest. That's it's what it rainforest. should be. Yeah. Okay, and then people coming to Bundi and Penetrable and, and Magahinga, you've got options. You got you can drive from Entebbe, um, from the airport in Uganda. Yeah. You can fly on small planes closer mm -hmm. uh, to get you to Kasoro yeah. or Kahihi on the north. Yeah. Um, and then people also drive from Kigali from Rwanda. True. Are those your effectively those are your three options? People are coming from all directions like that. Whether well, that hasn't any problem as long as the driving is safe yeah we've had uh, a, a small airplanes i mean helicopters the aerolink okay there is have to do the transfers from here kisoro to queen elizabeth and everywhere okay we've had people come in using flights and using uh, vehicles okay across the borders okay yeah water is impossible because uh, we are landlocked yeah. So oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no, there's no coming on our ship. Yeah. No, eh? no, yeah. Okay. It's just uh, the vehicles, the public means like the buses. Yeah. And uh, the matatus too. Yeah. Then uh, the land cruisers, depending on which vehicle. Yeah. 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 No, no. Just in general, I've seen most people. There's not much self-drive. It's mainly tour operators taking yeah, people ma across. Mainly, yeah. The roads are difficult, yeah. especially in rainy season. You don't want to get caught up. There's no Google Maps in Uganda. No. You navigating it's an adventure yeah. at every moment yeah and then just um these are more personal questions because yeah uh, you've been out there for a long time and you know what's good yeah what is your favorite trekking site and which gorilla group do you like visiting well uh, my favorite trekking site is here yeah it's here at uh at Rishaga. yeah okay mm -hmm. and your favorite group my favorite group is Bueza. Bueza. Yeah. Okay. Having, uh, more than one silverbacks and little more preful babies. Yeah, the play babies. I know. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, exactly. Our group, our every venture group, went recently, and the oh, babies yeah. were making themselves dizzy running around trees. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's your favorite group. That's my favorite. Okay. Yeah. Oh wow, that's a good group. Yeah. And then your most memorable or crazy wild experience with the gorillas? Maybe you don't be too crazy, <laughs> cause I, but uh, have you had anything really crazy well, that you uh, won't forget? Every time I visit the gorillas, it's always different. Yeah. So, uh, so memorable things are many. Yeah, I don't know what I can speak and what I can leave. Yeah. But uh, always as, as long as you make it to them. Yeah. The day is very memorable. Yeah. No, no, that's good to hear from a ranger yourself. Yeah. You're saying every every day is different. Yeah. Uh, you can track today, track tomorrow, and you have a completely different experience. That's true, yeah. Uh, it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience, but you must do it twice. <laughs> that's true. And then, But you just said that, I just want to clarify to people that yeah. are watching, you said that if you get there, your chance of seeing the gorillas, 99.9%? .9 as long as you reach there, it's 99%. Uh, yeah, 99%. because uh, as I said, it's actually more different from the past when uh, we had no people move at fast in yeah. the advanced team. Okay. Everybody was, you know, in a group. Clients moved with the truckers, moved with the security, moved with, moved with the guide, moved with the porter. Yeah. And so chances were many that you you could lose the group. Okay. So the... currently is why we had to choose strong people who will walk at fast. Yeah. Follow the group, and when they find the group. We use some communication and be okay. sure of the direction, be sure of the location. Yeah. yeah. No, that's good. I mean, people have come a long way. They're spending a lot of money. It's still wild movement. I saw yesterday nine hours of tracking. Yeah. It's not easy. It's still you tracking them. Yeah. So just having the help of having trackers in front, it still makes it pretty real. Yeah. And um, 
it makes it for the people especially that don't have much time mm -hmm. they've got their day to find them and yeah. that's perfect yeah well yeah i mean it's amazing and uh i wish i could go right now and go for a trek i mean the, the forest <laughs> is right behind me who knows maybe while we've been talking maybe some gorillas have walked past well uh, my best moment is always when i get to a group and i uh, see the babies climb up and you know bend the branches like swinging and yeah. playing i really feel happy because uh, that shows you know they are really safe and they okay. they feel they are the the kings of the jungle so that <laughs> so they feel safe even when humans are there they're not feeling safe. yeah as long as you keep your distance right yeah. and the yeah. babies are still playing you can they see the group still, still happy some who, yeah okay hang around the branches you know uh, you just trying to make the, the females happy on yeah the baby's playing this is amos he wants to <laughs> attract the females by saying the babies are playing his baby yeah. his best thing yeah but um yeah no it's so great um thanks for your time we can hear some uh, thunder coming. Yeah, yeah, so this yeah. is the rainforest. <laughs> I mean, sunshine in the morning. Yeah. Some thunder building. And uh, I'm sure there's some groups still tracking at the moment. We've seen some groups come in. And I hope this helps. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to that. I think we've covered a lot. Yeah, we've covered a lot. Yeah, I think yeah. we've covered the basics. And there's so much more to it that you just have to be and experience yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's truly a, a bucket list thing. And everyone across the globe wants to do it i did it it was spectacular uh that's why i'm here talking to a professional to yeah, explain the real experience yeah so yeah thanks for your time you're everyone. most welcome and we'll be seeing each other soon please and i want to be out there with you it was a pleasure to meet yeah. you today thank